Hi everybody, it's Carrie from Flowers for Dreams. Thank you so much for joining us for another DIY floral segment today where we'll design flowers together week by week. We have a really beautiful palette that I'm excited about because some of the elements dry really well. So let's get into it. Uh, for our filler, we don't have any foliage today, so let's be kind of a fun change. We have this really pretty Gypsophilium baby's breath. It's a very traditional um, filler, and I think it gets a bad rap, but it's definitely coming back, especially the sprayed varieties. So I love to play with this because it dries really well, and they just look like adorable little clouds, and we'll use it in a way that I think does not look um, old school or out of date. We have this really lovely dried palm spear. When these are fresh, they are um, green and grow in really tropical climates. Um, this has been trimmed a little bit, so they're typically really large, um, and this has been dried and has a really pretty beige tan color that I think will go well with our monochromatic pinks and beige. Our last dried element, that I use a lot and it's really fun are these bunny tails. So yours may look a little bit different. They may be like the ones behind me that are really um, soft and fluffy. This is a more wheat-like variety. They're both grasses and they've been bleached a little bit, um, but they're a really fun one that we can save. So when you're done with your arrangement as a fresh arrangement this week, um, you can morph it into something different and maybe repurpose some of the stems that will dry really well in bud vases around your home, which is always fun. We have the Sahara Sensation Spray Rose. Mine are actually a little bit different. This is more of a beige, um, a beige rose, which is fun. Yours may look a little bit more pink, but again, both will work for our beautiful pink and beige palette, pink and taupe. We have the Cremones. If you get your flowers and they look like this, they have a little netting over them, that's to help keep them intact and really fresh um, in the transport process. Because the heads are so big and the stem is so skinny, um, they do tend to snap. So we'll usually send a little bit of netting on them and I'll show you how to take that off in a second. And then for our uh, last vocal is the pink Mondial Rose. It's a gorgeous, creamy, pale pink rose that's known to be really, really large. So it's one of my favorites. They can be a bit thorny, so just check yours for thorns. Mine's pretty good, but you don't want to um, prick yourself while you're working today. I'm gonna be designing in this gorgeous compote vase um, that I pulled from our wedding session but if you do want to use your mason jar this works just as well they have pretty similar openings i always say that that's kind of a good um, comparison the smaller the opening the less floral you'll need to fill your vase and since we don't have any foliage today i'm going a little bit smaller but it will definitely work in your uh, mason jar arrangement so let's start with our Gypsophilium baby's breath. I, I usually call it Gypsophilium because it's just, I think it has a it has a bad rap. A lot like carnations, it seems like one of those that um, it's, it's left out of a lot of arrangements or people will say, I don't want any, no baby's breath. <laughs> and I think when it's used the right way, it can look really gorgeous. It's used a lot in wedding designs because it's so fluffy. So you may see those beautiful gypsophilium clouds. Um, it's pretty jointed. So I like to find those joint points and just trim those off first. And because it's, let me move this out of the way for a second. Um, because it's so soft and delicate, especially at the top, We'll want to kind of just go in and make sure that everything is not broken. So I like to just trim them down into smaller pieces and then I may save this one piece a little bit larger so that it can reach the bottom of my base. I always use my measuring trick and 
first step is kind of just to fill out, fill out the vase. But take a peek at your gypsophilium and check for any kinked stems. I'll show you this one up close. That's a kinked stem and it's not gonna draw up water. So this will um, typically fail. If you do wanna save any of these little bits, you can dry them, they dry quite well. You can hang them upside down. I also use the dried method where you just reduce the water to about an inch and then it'll kind of naturally dry. So I'm gonna start, this we need to go a little lower. Start by adding my gypsophilium kind of at an angle and just using it to really fluff up and fill out the vase and create this lovely little spray. And again, I think, I think gypsophilium is making a comeback, so I don't really see it as just a filler flower anymore. It's so pretty. You could even play around with um, spraying it with a little something. Here at the studio, we use floral paint for a lot of our, um, our flowers. And it's a little more quick drying, but spray paint would work just as well. So if you do want to save these, you can hang them upside down later. And then hit them with a little bit of colored spray paint and it'll give it a whole new life and a really different vibe, especially if you do a really fun, exciting, offbeat color like blue or pink. You could even do a mix of pink and red. Now I've got my base built in there and I'm gonna push down a little bit more and start adding our spray roses. I have these beige spray roses, but yours may look a little bit different. The way that mine is has grown is it's got a little bit of a natural joint point. Always look for those joint points. I'm gonna divide it first, and then kind of go in and check, always check the outer petals. They're the part of the rose that sustains the most damage. I usually pull off all the foliage so that it doesn't drink up water. And then just pick off the outer layer of petals. I love that sensory feedback you get from plucking petals. But we wanna get down to that gorgeous center of the rose that's untouched. And oftentimes the outer petals a little bit of brown on them, which is no good. I always like to go into and just clean up any bare stems. Floral design is all about editing, and I think so. Editing down your flowers. I'm gonna keep these in their natural shape because I think it's really pretty when you can preserve that natural shape. I may just trim off one side here and put that a little bit lower so I've got kind of this lovely spray. This won't open up but I'm going to use it anyway because I think it adds a little little extra something. Not everything is going to be a really big and bold flower. Sometimes it's fun to use these little pieces that you know you know it won't open but it adds a little quiet something to our arrangement. Let's do our snapdragon next. Oh, I love these pink snaps. They um, remind me of spring. I know it's not springtime now, but it kind of helps you hold on <laughs> until, until we get there. Um, and this is going to match our, our pink and beige palette, <clears throat> almost monochrome. So because mine is so well endowed, I'm going to just pull off the lower petals, but I wanted to show you two other snapdragons. So even if I get a snapdragon with the top snapped off, I still think they're really pretty and I'll use this in an arrangement or if 
you know, you happen to, to damage your snap during the design process. Here's another one that's a little bit smaller and more petite. They're still really useful. And I try to value every flower. Every flower is just gonna be a little bit different. That's okay, they're not all big and covered in petals like this one. Um, they can still be really beautiful for what they are. Add this Snapdragon as our linear. Cut it down a little bit more. And I'll try to leave it out to the side so that we can fully enjoy that luscious pink. Not let it get covered up too much by our lovely cloud spray. Um, let's add our rose next. I usually add my focal flower last, but a lot of designers will start with their hero flower so that it really gets top billing. And I'm peeling off the outer layer of petals. My rose is still pretty tightly closed. And I wanna leave a little space for it to open up. This is probably a little bit long. So it'll look a little different now than it will in a couple of days when it just fully opens and looks luscious and gorgeous. Next, let's add our chrysanthemum cremones, these babies. Now, here's one that's netted. Always wanna be careful when you're pulling off the netting from the flower, because you don't wanna rip the head off with it. So always try to peel it back from the bottom. And this is a little more closed. You can kind of see the one that's been netted. It's a little more tight. It'll open up over the next couple of days. It's tempting to just tug on that and pull it pull it off, but it's really easy to snap the head. So I usually just gently peel back the netting. I'll add a little pop of pink beige. It's almost beige. I Can, can't quite tell whether these cremones are beige or pink, which I think is really pretty. Here's the back side. I added one, one little cremone moment on the back side so that I can have this look really gorgeous from every angle. And I'll do one more. I kind of want to connect, connect the flower to those little puffs of baby's breath. This is such a feminine arrangement. Although I know these days we're kind of rewriting the gender rules and deciding what is feminine, what is masculine, but this just feels over the top feminine to me with the pinks, the whites, the fluffiness. Here's our palm spear. Adding dried elements to your arrangement is Fun to play around with because they can just really add something different. And I like to use palm spears to kind of highlight. You can use it like a frame. So if there's an, if there's an area that you want to highlight, you can use your palm spear to draw some attention to that. I moved it over here because I think we've got enough weight on this side with our focal flower with our lovely draping linear snapdragon. Feels a little more balanced on this side and kind of calls out this bloom by framing it. And I like to add my dried elements at the end because they tend to be a little more delicate. I don't want them to get mashed. They don't need water, of course. So the stems will absorb a little bit of water, but typically it doesn't do them any harm. And then again, after about a week or so, if you've enjoyed your lovely pink boho arrangement, you can take it all apart or reduce the water and let it dry like that. The snapdragons, the roses, and the cremones will not make it to the drying phase. 
Roses sometimes can dry well if they're hung upside down. I tend to find dried roses to be a little bit um, uh, too like old feeling for me. I think it looks, looks other things look a little prettier dried. Um, roses tend to feel a little too old fashioned, but it is again, fun to play with those more traditional flowers like the baby's breath, like carnations that have maybe gotten a bad, a bad rap, but are sort of coming back. So now I'm gonna add in these little <clears throat> puffs, my bunny tails all around. It doesn't even, you can kind of scatter them. So I can be a little more, a little less intentional of where I'm putting them so that there's just a little moment of this white all around. I'm gonna add a few on the back. I think they echo that ethereal, sort of ethereal vibe we have with the baby's breath. It's also easy to work with dried stuff because it doesn't matter if it reaches the bottom of the vase. So you can sometimes prop them up in other pieces if your arrangement isn't going anywhere. For bouquets that have to travel, that might be a little bit more tricky. Go add a couple more pieces here. Oh, wow. So gorgeous. Feels really bohemian, over the top femme with this fluffy pink and the whites, sort of a play on this more neutral palette of just pinks and beige. It can be a fun way to play with flowers is picking one color family and staying within that. And I've designed it in this really cute compote vase that I pulled out of our, um, our wedding section. I find a lot of vase inspiration from um, the thrift store, so you can find really cheap vases. It's also nice to have something um, that you can give away. So I try to stock up whenever I see a fun vase at the thrift store, and then when I want to gift something to somebody, I don't have to feel bad because I only I know I can pick up another one. I'm gonna pop this into the mason jar vase, just so you can see that as well. Oh, beautiful. And when you're um, changing the water with your arrangement, don't be afraid to pick everything up and out of the vase. I know it can seem intimidating, but it's almost like a bouquet in that sense. Um, so you can lift the entire thing up, change the water, um, and keep it looking, keep your fresh flowers looking fresher for longer. And then if, if this was, uh, this is my arrangement, but if this was at home um, right now, after I've enjoyed it, I would just let the water evaporate or fill it up down to like one inch and maybe let some of the fresh, pull the fresh items out and let the dried stuff dry and then repurpose it in bud vases. Oh, I love this arrangement. Thank you so much for joining us for another DIY video. I can't wait to see you next week.